Okay, let's start. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us tonight to hear from film funders. I'm JT Takagi of Third World Newsreel, a progressive media center that prioritizes media by and about people of color and social justice issues. We do this through production, educational distribution, exhibition, training, and events like this. This event is also sponsored by the Documentary Forum at CCNY, a center in the City College of New York dedicated to supporting documentary film and nonfiction storytelling, visual storytelling through multi-platform media. Uh, please first join me in acknowledging that we're on the unceded territory of the Lenni Lenape, Canarsie, Shinnecock, and Muncie peoples. We acknowledge and challenge the harm that continues to be inflicted upon indigenous and people of color communities here and abroad, which is why we all need to be part of the struggle for rights, equality, and justice. Some housekeeping notes. We're keeping the attendees muted, but welcome your questions and comments in the chat. And I will also be making short intros uh, of our speakers and longer bios will be in the chat. So first, uh, Ariane Blanco, works in arts management, grant making, directing, and producing. He is program director at New York State Council on the Arts, which we also call NISCA, overseeing a grant making portfolio of 3.8 million to 10 million annually um, across multiple program areas. And Ariane, I hope you will also mention what those other program areas are besides individual artists. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Adian Blanco, Program Director at New York State Council on the Arts, um, as JT said, or NISCA, as a lot of folks refer to it. Um, and um, yes, my, my main portfolio is working with the Individual Artist Program, which currently encompasses grant opportunities in eight different discipline areas. And, um, and I, I, I'm imagining most of you folks are film, media, new technology artists which is certainly one of those areas. Um, and my other program um, is with special arts services, which is really a focus on community-based organizations um, that, that come under sort of the preview of the, of the panels. I'll convene to, to review those as well. But today we're gonna talk about the individual artist program or as it's called currently in its current configuration, support for artists. Um, and so on our website, you can, you can see here, you can see here that um, we have the main page. Hold on one moment. And from there, um, from the main page, one moment, please. Um, I, I, I want to kind of demystify how to get information on our website, right? So, so as an individual artist, you might see if you visit our website, a lot of information like pre-qualification, um, getting your vendor ID number, things like that that are really for organizations that apply to NISCA. Um, for individual artists, what you wanna do is you're gonna work with an organization that's already qualified to apply to NISCA that's gonna serve as your fiscal sponsor. So a lot of that information doesn't pertain to you. They're handling that because they're gonna work with you to submit your application on your behalf, which is my first tip. Um, your role, your first role, if you don't already have someone lined up is to find a fiscal sponsor they will submit your application on your behalf. Um, but where you can go certainly is um, when the, the, in the gray border, what we fund, there's the funding areas. You click on there. Excellent. And then as you scroll down, you'll see our actual program areas. This is how we're organized behind the scenes to deliberate on applications. And for example, if you're a media maker, you might see electronic media and film and say, that's where I go. But no, because that's for organizational support of electronic media and film organizations um, um, like, like tonight's host. Um, what you want to do is you want to scroll down to individual artists and then click there. And, um, and there you'll see um, my thumbnail, my colleague Oren Chait, we, we, we work together to basically run the program opportunities that encompass support for artists. Um, so here's where you'll see like a summary of sort of the gist of the program um, and what we support in general. Um, and then as you scroll a little farther down, you'll see um, there's um, forms and guidelines. We'll go there in a moment, but on the right-hand side, resources. Now there are many resources throughout the state. 
what these resources have in common on this list, including um, uh, Wayfarm, which um, which who is here to discuss their program as well tonight. So I don't want to steal the thunder. These are actual partners um, working with NISCA to mostly provide regrants and services, um, or both in some cases, right? Um, so that's what makes this list very particular for being here. Um, so it's another way actually to get to NISCA dollars, even as an individual artist, right? Through these regrant programs that they definitely, some of them are very discipline specific, like Art New York is for theater artists. Um, Way Farm, for example, would be for media artists. Um, and there's a few, some, some of them are pretty self-explanatory there, but that's the idea. Um, but um, if you can click on FY23 opportunities, you'll see on this next page, this is like our current guidelines. This is where they live. And as you scroll through them, it's whatever the current most opportunity is that's available is up on top. But as you scroll down, you'll see and you'll get to the point where you see our support for artist opportunity. Okay, it's so about halfway through and it's right there and it kind of hyperlinks support for artist guidelines. And you can click on the guidelines. And there we go. And as an individual artist, this is what you want to get familiar with. Everything you need to know about applying to NISCA and what materials and what questions you need to answer are within these guidelines. Also, all the eligibility criteria are articulated in these guidelines. Okay, I'm not gonna go through them point by point. This is just to give you a sense of where the information is, um, but I will wanna settle on that first um, page one of 15, where you can see our eight program areas there listed. They include choreography commissions, composer compositions, film, media, and new technology, folk and traditional arts, interdisciplinary, literature, theater commissions, and visual arts. As an artist applying, as a sponsored artist applying, you, you would select one area to apply in a given year, okay? So if you're, if you're a hyphenate and you're very talented, that's awesome, but in a given year, you would only apply once. Um, and of course, um, film, media, and new technology is the one you can click on there and it'll take you to sort of the, the particulars in terms of what's required with respect to support materials and what we fund within that particular area or discipline. Okay. Um, and, um, and that brings me to tip number two, which is um, especially if you might apply in different areas, um, different disciplines, um, just be mindful that the support materials are different depending on which area you apply to. Now for film, media, new technology, we do have subgenres like animation, experimental. Um, this, is, this is the same area. Um, they, they're, they're all grouped together and we have guidelines as to what kind of materials, irrespective of that specific discipline you might be, um, subgenre, excuse me, that you might be um, applying under to provide. So tip number two is, provide what we're asking for, don't provide things that we're not asking for um, and be really particular. One of the things is two, two links to your media work samples to the extent that that makes sense to your particular project. Um, give us two, don't give us four. Don't have us guessing, for example. Um, and then um, farther up, you'll, you'll see the general guidelines where we have our narrative section, okay? Um, uh, and that is on page nine. And regardless of which area you select, whether it's interdisciplinary, again, composer composition or, or film media, new technology, of course, um, it's the same question. As you can see, it's, 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 it's organized as an open-ended essay style format where basically it's 10,000 characters to tell your story. And which brings me to tip number three, what you wanna do is you wanna cover the bullets um, that are below there, the, the instructions there in terms of filling out your narrative 
response that's part of your application packet. Um, the other thing to keep in mind with NISCA specific uh, or NISCA specific opportunity is you're not you're not dealing with any of our platforms in any way. Um, your sponsor does that with their credentials and they apply on your behalf. So what you're setting up on your end as the sponsored artist is basically your 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 application packet, which includes um, basically your own document that you set up that's ten thousand characters long. That, that's your, your narrative response. And you do want to seek through those various bullets. You want to respond to them and answer them. Um, and, and that brings me to tip number four, which is um, it's, a, it's a kind of art form. And it's also a skill that is definitely can be learned. You want to be, obviously, you have a limit with the character limits. You want to be um, what I call the three Cs, which are uh, clear, concise, yet complete. And I, I'm not saying it's an easy task, but the very successful applications get very good at drilling down into what their project is, what it's about, and answering these bullets and, and within the 10,000 character limit. OK. And then um, I just want to scroll towards the beginning of this document, towards the top. You will see a lot of summary information um, where we talk about, once again, things like being pre-qualified, registration questions. Um, some of this is just across the board, pertains to the organization that's acting as your fiscal sponsor. So just keep that in mind, that, that some of it doesn't pertain to you. Um, so, uh, what, what really pertains to you is all the, from the narrative down, relating to the application packet you're gonna set up which will include a document that's your narrative response. And then in document form, um, whatever support materials we're asking for. And again, that'll depend on which, which area you're applying under. Um, we, we looked at that for a moment when we were down looking at film media and new technology. Um, and, and then what you wanna do is ideally then string together all those materials into a single multi-page PDF that becomes the upload of your application packet that you provide to your sponsor, who then uploads it as part of your application in our system. Okay. And um, th that's, uh, that's basically the gist in terms of what I wanted to cover here in the real sort of um, 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 macro level. And, and then the only other thing that I wanted to do is um, um, going to back to our website Just one more section that's uh, definitely could be um, helpful. Um, uh, resources. Okay, and then you can see a drop down list of numerous different kinds of resources that are available um, beyond our, our re grant partnerships, um, and, and um, including the relief fund section, um, as well as. Um, Uh, access to past um, informational um, learn and connect informational videos that we have about our grant making process. And, and so with that brief overall general summary, I, 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 I will conclude my remarks. Thank you, Ariane. And um, I'm sure there's going to be questions about like what, in fact, is NISCA looking for, things like that. But we're going to go on. We'll come back to that after uh, Galen Joseph Hunter talks about Wave Farm. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so, uh, hi everyone. I'm great to. It's great to be here. Um, I'm, I'm pleased that I'm following Arian and Niska because um, as uh, was pointed out, Wave Farm is a regrant partner of Niska and the program I'm gonna talk to you about um, is indeed a regrant partnership. I will mention first though that um, Wave Farm does serve as a fiscal sponsor for Niska's Support for Artists program. Um, we try to support 
artists and applications who are aligned with Wave Farm's mission. Um, but if you're looking for a fiscal sponsor, um, feel free to reach out to info at wavefarm.org um, and we can have a conversation. Um, so let's see, that looks like I can share here. Um, so Wave Farm, um, formerly known as Free 103.9, uh, started working with NISCA in two, as a regrant partner in 2009. Um, we took on what was formerly referred to as the distribution grant. Um, and then in 2019, we took on what used to be known as finishing funds. Um, and we've lumped everything together and under the Media Arts Assistance Fund. Um, on our website, uh, under grants, you'll see um, short for uh, Media Arts Assistance Fund is MAAF. Um, we have a program for organizations and you're gonna wanna go to the MAF for Artists link here, which will get you to the page we're looking at here. Um, I also wanna point out on the left here, um, past grantees. I think this is probably a very um, helpful section for uh, potential applicants. Um, you can go to 2002, and you can read about the past successful applicants to this program and the kinds of projects that were successful in last year's panel. Um, the upcoming application deadline for MAF for Artists is January 15th. Um, the program provides up to $7,500 to support either the completion of a nearly complete media artwork or the public present and or the public presentation of a new or recently completed media artwork. So um, we are media arts centric. We are not specifically film centric. Um, in fact, we are um, unable to support feature length uh, nonfiction uh, documentary works. We are able to support um, artist, independent artists made um, experimental documentaries, however. Um, we support media arts uh, projects in all of its many uh, Subgenres. So we're talking about sound art, uh, technologies and art form, immersive media, uh, experimental video, and uh, film. Um, the application is through submittable. Um, we uh, last year received, I should have looked at these numbers. Um, whew, we had a big increase. I think we received over 200 applications um, or thereabouts, um, and we were able to support 15 artists. Um, we uh, are eager to support artists across the entire state. Um, this is an opportunity that's specific for New York State artists. Um, there, as, a, as a discovery grant uh, program, only New York State artists are eligible. We do accept applications from collectives. There does need to be a lead artist or a contact um, that is a New York State resident. Um, I also wanted to um, mention our uh, New York Media Arts map, um, which I should put the link in the chat, um, which is another kind of uh, partnership with NISCA. Um, let me throw that in there for you guys. Um, but the reason I'm mentioning it here is it tracks um, past MAF artist grantees, maps them. Um, and it also has a funding opportunities section that um, lists other grant opportunities that may be useful to you um, as well. Um, and I'm eager to hear uh, questions. And I think um, I'm gonna keep this really brief so that we have plenty of Q and A time. Um, and I look forward to chatting with you then. All right, thank you very much, Galen. Um, and now we're gonna hear from Eleanor Savage of the Jerome Foundation, which supports early career artists and organizations through grants and fellowships, only in New York City and Minnesota. So welcome, Eleanor. Thank you so much and, and hi, everyone. Uh, I'm the program director at Jerome Foundation and we are, a uh, uh, 
We are not a re-grantor. We are an um, independent foundation. Our office is based in Minneapolis, Minnesota, um, and uh, actually St. Paul, Minnesota. I'm at joining you from my home in Minneapolis. Um, but we fund in New York City and Minnesota. And the reason is because our, our founder, Jerome Hill, was born in Minnesota and lived most of his creative life in New York City. Um, so uh, we are focused on supporting early career artists. We define that as artists uh, who are not at a beginning point, uh, not first time filmmakers, but have at least a couple of years of experience and have created their own original work. Uh, and those who are don't have two um, features in distribution or are kind of at the 10 year mark in terms of their uh, career span. And there's a lot more information. I'm going to share screen now to show you our website just briefly. I hope everyone can see this. Um, so under grant opportunities, we also have uh, opportunities for individual artists as well as organizations. Um, we have a fellowship program that supports uh, filmmakers as well, but that is not open again until 2025. But the film and video digital grants, you'll see here the New York City Film Video Digital Production Grant. And that's what I'm going to focus on today. That will open in early 2023 in January for application. Uh, so I'll just click into here momentarily. I'm not gonna go through. The application isn't up yet. We're still developing that. And, um, but we try to lay the information out very um, specifically and clearly. Um, you can download the guidelines. You can walk through uh, all of the guidelines here. Um, by you know, clicking on to these tabs and it'll take you to, to the different sections of information. Um, we encourage you to you know, kind of really dive into these guidelines and give them a read. Um, I think one of the things I wanna highlight is eligibility. So we've, we use submittable uh, for the application. And if you click on the eligibility questionnaire, it'll take you into Submittable. Um, it'll also kind of walk you through it here. And it's also in the PDF that you can download. So everything, all the information is the same. It's just available to you in different locations, depending on how you like to take in information. Um, but in Submittable, you'll take the uh, eligibility questionnaire and uh, hopefully that will flag for you if you aren't eligible. We also offer um, uh, information sessions. Uh, we offer eligibility calls, or even if you just have questions about the application, um, we try to be available to you uh, to help you find your way through our application process. So we encourage you to, you know, take us up on that. Don't be intimidated. We're here to support you. Um, we love filmmakers. We love artists. And uh, we, I, uh, you know, I'm 60 now, but back in the day in my 20s, when I was applying for grants, I remember how terrifying and uh, mystifying it was to try to figure out the path through all the different processes. So um, just know that we, you know, we, we are on your side and we want to offer support for the process. I think, uh, our application asks for work samples, uh, a CV and some answers to questions about your project and about you as a filmmaker. Uh, I think the, the biggest reasons people are not don't meet our eligibility is uh, we're ineligible work samples. Um, so providing work samples that are co-directed. If, if you're applying as an individual, you need to have work samples that you have, have created. 
and you can't have a, a co-director. And unfortunately, you know, for our last round of, of this program, we had 245 applications. I think we had about 180 of those that were actually eligible. And one of the biggest disconnects was ineligible work samples. So that's something that we're really gonna be talking about a lot this round to try to help, you know, really have a good understanding. Um, our goal is that, you know, people don't spend a lot of time if you're not eligible because your time is very valuable. And uh, we, want to we want to try to spend a lot of time on that eligibility up front. Um, another um, reason uh, people were ineligible is just not clearly uh, providing information on your CV or resume. Um, so we asked for, you know, the dates of your, of your projects. Um, we don't have any requirement that people have, you know, degrees in filmmaking, um, but one of our eligibility requirements is that we don't uh, accept applications from people who are in a degree program. So you have to clearly establish that you're not. Um, and uh, having the dates uh, on your resume or CV is, is really important. Um, what else do I want to share with you? Um, I think the the um, narrative questions that we ask, you can answer those either through uh, writing or through a video. So you can upload a, a simple video of yourself using your, you know, made with your phone. It doesn't, the focus isn't on creating a, you know, production, uh, but just in answering the questions either uh, through video or through text. And we've uh, done a lot of surveying of this to see if there's any benefits in terms of are the success rate for people applying either way, and there isn't. Um, it's just more, you know, what, how are you more comfortable answering the questions? And thoroughly answering the questions um, is what panelists tell us is most important. Um, when, when applicants just provide a very brief surface level response, it doesn't give the panelists enough information to really understand who you are as a filmmaker, what it is that you're doing. Uh, so those are, are the, my tips. Back to you, JT. All right, thank you. Um, and so now we're opening it up for some questions. I have some already off the bat for everyone is, uh, um, we heard from Wayfarm in terms of the amounts and uh, I, um, I'm wondering what the level of support is from Jerome and the level of support is from NISCA. Jerome Foundation is up to $30,000. Okay. N NIS NISCA individual artist, uh, support for artists is 10,000. All or nothing. Okay, so that is the the new policy then, because it used to be different. Uh, well, for media artists, um, not for the other art forms. For media artists, there was a production grant that was up to twenty five thousand, but it did require a match. So you needed to have a project cost that was at least double that or more um, to ask for the full amount, and it was scaled. So it depended on, yeah. So now now it's a lot more summary. The application is less work. And also it's been reconfigured the media opportunity, right? Specifically from past years, it's been reconfigured as a creative grant instead of a production grant. So there is no match requirement. Um, there is no accounting for it in terms of like specific costs to cover. It's literally a creative fee paid to the artist. That's the spirit of it, that then the artist can deploy any way they, they deem fit. Like they could pay their rent but the point is that it's towards doing, having the time for the creative output, right? That they've articulated in the application. Although many artists will cover costs with the grant, of course. And maybe I'll just add on to that, um, is that uh, as a regrant partnership of NISCA, MAAF is working in tandem with support for artists. So we've actually um, shifted our program calendar so that it's easier for an artist to um, go into NISCA 
hopefully be successful with a $10,000 grant in one year and then still be eligible to come into Wave Farms Media Arts Assistance Fund the next year for maybe public presentation support of the project they were able to complete with NISCA funding. Right, I think one aspect of NISCA funding, right, is that if you apply one year, you can't apply the very next year as well, right? You have to wait. Correct, we, we call it internally the sit-down rule. Um, and, and, and that's just a function of the volume of applications we get more than anything. Um, also, we, we, we did that to ensure that folks feel really good about their projects and then they're just applying just in case and wasting everyone's time. So, um, and this is where the Wave Farm reconfiguration comes in because in that off year, now you can apply to Wave Farm. So, so, so you can apply essentially every year for NISCA funds between NISCA directly as a sponsored artist or via the regrant program at Wave Farm, for example. Got it. And uh, also to clarify, for the Jerome Foundation, do you need a fiscal sponsor or do you apply as an individual? No, you don't need a fiscal sponsor at all. You're applying as an individual and the funding is directed to the individual. Got it. And um, someone asked, can any organization serve as a fiscal sponsor? And that's for NISCA and uh, Wayfarm. Uh, I'll answer that first, and I think that might answer in general, but um, any nonprofit organization can serve as a fiscal sponsor. So they doesn't have to be like an art centric organization. But that being said, um, any nonprofit seeking to what we call do business with the state of New York, um, including applying for these grants or any grant from any state agency, they need to be pre qualified through Grants Gateway. Again, as the artist, if you see this in our materials, this does not apply to you. This would apply to the sponsoring organization. So that's why oftentimes the best strategy is to find an organization that's already getting NISCA funding to serve in that role because you know they're already pre-qualified. But it doesn't have to be an arts-specific organization. But it can't be any organization. Like for-profit corporations are not eligible. But it could be any kind of nonprofit um, that's in the state of New York operating in the state of New York. Just to clarify, MAF for artists at Wave Farm, you do not need a fiscal sponsor. In fact, you may not have one. It's an opportunity for an individual artist to apply for. And it sounds like similarly to Jerome, funds are uh, granted to us an individual. And the person with the question also said that they wanted to get a small amount of funding to help finish writing a screenplay. Is that the kind of thing any of you would support? Uh, provide funding for. Um, Not very so, so our, our newly reconfigured um, creative grant certainly under the pre-production element would cover something like that, including research and, and script uh, uh, development. Right. And Jerome? And Jerome does not uh, directly fund screenwriters. Um, if you're a, a filmmaker who is creating a screen play as part of your production process, uh, you, as long as you're gonna be in production during uh, the particular grant period, um, you could uh, direct some of the funding towards completing the, the script, the screenplay. And, uh... For the Drone Foundation, what kind of projects have you found that you gravitate towards in terms of support? Uh, we are, um, it's very diverse in terms of, you know, content. We, we focus on uh, documentary, narrative, uh, experimental, and animation. Uh, and, you know, in terms of subject matter and content, it 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 varies widely, um, but we're focused on you know artists who are taking uh, creative risks in their work, and that's self defined by the artist and the application. Um, and you know, there's there'll be more information about the specific framing uh, that we use in terms of our values, which are diversity. Uh, innovation and, and creative risk-taking uh, and 
uh, humility. So what does humility mean? That's um, we see ourselves as in service to artists and to arts organizations, and we want to fund artists and arts organizations that are also have some intentionality about their role as a filmmaker in, in their uh, community. Okay. Um, and a uh, question was that the website we saw for NISCA had the deadline of July 12th, 2022. Do we know uh, when the next NISCA deadline will be? Uh, yes, yeah, so that was uh, this past round. It, it kind of just lingers and stays up there from year to year. We have not established next year's um, opportunity um, schedule, um, but um, it's usually at the beginning of the year between January and March that we open up like the, you know, the next round of funding. We have a single annual deadline, so it's once a year. And to keep in mind, we fund a year out. So that means that an application made this year, for example, for that close that's listed there on the website, will, is for funding um, qualified activity or creative work in this case in the coming year, in 2023. So when you apply in 2023, it's really about whatever you have, you're thinking you're up to in your project in terms of 2024, a year out. Got it. Um... And Jerome, do you have that same restriction in terms of when the start date and end date is? Uh, we will um, announce the awards in. Let me make sure I'm saying this right. In the in the fall of 2023, and so the the. Uh, it will have to be in production sometime between 2023 and May of 2025. So uh, you have a long window there. Um, the funds can support all stages of production, but you do have to intend to go into production during that window. Uh, and yeah, uh, we will be opening our application cycle in January, 2023. I don't have a specific date yet, but uh, we will announce that soon on our website. Got it. And someone else asked, is there any restriction on heavy violence, such as an action type film? And that's, I guess, to everyone. Jerome doesn't have uh, any restrictions on content. Neither does Wave Farm. And I did just post our timeline in the chat because we're actually a bit um, more uh, rapid in our process, I've, um, probably because we're smaller um, than Jerome and Niska. Um, but uh, we also are talking about a, a more immediate project period, which might be of interest to certain uh, folks in the audience. Oh, that's good to know. All right. Um, do we have a newsletter? Does everyone have a newsletter that uh, filmmakers should sign up for to get the latest info? Yes. Good. So maybe you'll uh, post it in the chat. <laughs> or do they just go to the website? Right. I actually meant to cover that. Um, on the homepage, you can scroll to the bottom, and there's, an, there's basically for announcements, you can just sign up. So this way you'll receive any updates announcements, guidelines, opportunities, even partnership opportunities, I believe. Great. And is Wayfarm included in that? Or is there a separate newsletter for Wayfarm? Yeah, I just put the, the link to the form to sign up in the chat. Okay. We do a monthly email announcement. And uh, Jerome, is there a newsletter there? We don't have a newsletter, but there is a sign up for uh, announcements. And you can find that if you go to our website, which I will, I can drop that in again here. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see uh, a place to enter your website to receive any announcements. And, and we will definitely um, send out word when, when we open the grant cycle. Also, everybody, if you sign up for the Third World Newsreel e-news, 
you will get those same notices too, because we keep track of these guys. Um, another question is about restrictions on documentary films that are examining an international political event like Brexit. No, no restrictions from Jerome. We we don't uh, have any kind of filters on content. And this guy, I guess, and Way Farm. No restriction on content or or topic for documentaries, um, other than um, you know, it's a creative fee, so it's less of an issue. When it was a production grant, the funds needed to be spent, like in post production, for example, if it's international, here in New York State. But in this case, the artist is getting a creative fee, so it's less of an issue. Okay, and that and related to that, someone asked if they get a film grant. Does the money have? Does the film have to be completely shot in New York to be eligible? Not for Niska. Not for Jerome either. Now I think right with Niska, there is some restriction in terms of travel costs within a grant. Don't those have to be spent in New York? Yeah, we we do have some general um, sort of um, items that we wouldn't want our grant to specifically cover. Um, and capital expenses, you know, any gear that you can amortize and, and travel outside of the state of New York. So if you, if you have a project and it's within the state, that, that's fine. But again, it's been reconfigured as a, um, as a creative grant. So even then, that's not really something we're going to look at the same way we used to when it was a production grant. Wave Farm still does have that uh, restriction, um, although I'm wondering if I should revisit that Niska, if they're not enforcing it anymore. But um, for 2023, you may not use uh, MAF funds for outside of New York state travel. Got it. Um, someone asked if you have a short film, can they apply for funding to produce the feature that's based on a short? And that's to Wave Farm. No, so the Wave Farm opportunities, um, and this is really important because in terms of artists who unfortunately spend time applying and aren't eligible. It's, it's because um, they may not clearly understand the completion grant. You must be, we say 75% done with your project. This is really funding to help you get to the home stretch. Um, and for the public presentation, you, um, if you're coming in just for public presentation with a 2023 application, you had to finish that project in 2022. Um, and you have to demonstrate that that project is finished. So this is really about getting newly completed media artworks out to the public, getting them completed and getting them to public audiences. So I have a question based on what was raised before about uh, a sample being ineligible because of, it was co-directed. Um, is there a restriction about co-directors applying for grants at any of these, uh, any of your funding organizations? Co-directors can apply at Jerome, uh, and, but the work samples need to be work that the, the co-directors that are applying have, have created. Uh, and then if you're applying as an individual director, you have to apply with, with sample work samples that you have individually directed versus co-directed with someone else. The reason for that is that the panels can't differentiate, you know, if you're an individual applicant, you know, what, what was your role? What is your work? They're, they're trying to evaluate you as an individual director. Same with co-directing teams. The panel wants to see your work as co-directors. How about Niska, do you have? Yeah, so, 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 so um, similar to what Galen said with um, the math opportunity, um, uh, Production teams, creative teams certainly can apply, um, but for the purposes of our grant opportunities, we ask that among key collaborators, someone is named the lead artist that's like the artist of record. But they could certainly speak to um, the extent of their, collab their collaborators and how they're collaborating as part of the application in those cases, especially when they're co-doing something. Um, and, 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 and very similarly, those work samples should be appropriate to that relationship, if that's the case. 
And certainly if you're applying and, and, and you're using samples where you were not the director, that does come up in our panels as, as a concern. And, and um, what if there's a lot of new groups that are forming that are collectives, that are making projects as a collective, can, can they apply then as the collective? Not as the collective. Amongst them, they would name one of them the lead artist that we would key in on as part of the application process. Um, so it should be, you know, um, in that case, whoever is the lead director, you know, writer, you know, sometimes a writer producer might be the person, um, but, you know, it's usually the most creative sort of head there. But certainly they could speak to how they're collaborating with their fellow collective members as part of the overall application, including providing, in that case, their, those resumes of their key collaborators that in this case, in your example, would be you know, the members of the collective. Got it. Same and thing for Wave Farm. Collectives, uh, projects that are that are created by a collective are certainly eligible, but a single person has to be the applicant. And, um, you know, the artist of record, but also maybe more importantly for this group to understand the artist who gets the check and gets the 1099. So yes. you guys would have to figure out how to manage that as a collective. Mm -hmm. Same for Niska. And for Jerome, uh, only the directors can apply. So you have to be either director or co-director, or if there's a collaboration of directors working on a particular project. Um, but everyone who applies has to meet all of the eligibility requirements. So be early career, be involved in directing the project that's being applied for and et cetera. Got it. Someone else asked if there's uh, funding available for general operating expenses for a film festival, or do you have to apply for a specific activity? I would think this is for NISCA probably. Well, for, for NISCA, you would go to when you were looking at those program areas, electronic media and film, if that's what it's called instead of individual artists. Um, and, and you would apply as, a, as an organization to support a festival, not as an individual. So the criteria is different. But we certainly fund many organizations that do produce festivals all, all across the state. Mm -hmm. um, do they but, all have to be registered nonprofits then already? Um, yes, or if it's an unincorporated collective trying to do that, um, they can come in as a sponsored request, but under our support for organization guidelines, not the individual artist guidelines. So our support for artist guidelines are strictly for art makers, and they're structured as creative grants to those art makers, not to produce like a program, like a festival, but rather their artwork, like a film, or whatever it is that's related to media. Um, so another question is how to apply for a sponsorship. So uh, you'll have to approach, there's a bunch of organizations that act as fiscal sponsors for um, filmmakers and artists. And uh, you probably, I would guess there might be a list on the NISCA site possibly. Um, but for instance, our organization is one, but you would first look on their organizational site to see what constitutes eligibility to be fiscal sponsored by that group. And it's often like in our case that you're, the film you're working on has to meet our mission standards. So, and, and then after that, um, it would, it's simply a matter of looking at our guidelines and sending in an application. And most groups I think are similar in that way. Um, and Wave Farm does fiscal sponsorships as well, right, Galen? We do, again, they have to be, um very aligned with Wave Farm's organizational mission, um, which is, you know, we have a whole slate of programs um, outside of our regret partnership that are devoted to the idea of transmission art and broadcast media as an art form. Um, you know, there are there are groups like Fractured Atlas that specifically fiscally do fiscal sponsorship. And I know they've served as sponsors for NISCA too. And um, so that might be a, a place to look um, as well. Right, top three service organizations that provide this as a service 
um, Fractured Atlas, Performance Zone, and NIFA, New York Foundation for the Arts. Um, they, they, they're, they're very vassal. Now, what I also will counsel anyone who's like, oh, how do I do it? How, what do I, how do I find a fiscal sponsor? Think about organizations that you have relationships with that may very well be a nonprofit if you don't already know them to be a nonprofit. And, and more often than not, someone's worked with or, or have gotten services from one of the many organizations get, that get NISCA funded. Sometimes it's not obvious. Um, so, so I would start there. And then yes, on our website, we do have um, um, actually a, a, like a search engine where you can look up previously funded organizations and that could help sort of create your, you can, and you, and you can, you can um, filter it like individual artists. So this way you get those that have done this function and that could create your prospect list from there as well. That you would reach out to them individually to see about them sponsoring your project. But more often than that, artists working out there in the world know someone that works for a nonprofit that maybe can provide this, you know, serve in this role as a fiscal sponsor. Got it. And there's also a question about whether Jerome only funds filmmakers or also mixed media artists and photographers. Mm -hmm. For the New York City Film Video and Digital Production Program, we only fund filmmakers through that program. But for the Jerome Hill Artist Fellowship Program, we support um, you know, multiple fields, uh, including visual arts, film video, theater, uh, literature, music, dance, and tech-centered arts. Okay. And uh, a NIFA that uh, Ryan just mentioned also has some granting programs as well. Um, and we had them on earlier this semester to talk about that. Um, okay. And I'm not seeing other questions. This is your last chance, everyone, if you have questions. Um, so we got some idea from Eleanor about the kinds of work Jerome's looking for, does NISCA have anything like that where they're looking for a particular kind of project? Uh, great question. I, I was gonna give it up anyway as a, as a response, closing remark, but um, we, we don't have um, that kind of, we're like a broad sort of tent funder when it comes to art making. You wanna, you wanna meet our, our basic criteria, of course, it's in the guidelines, um, uh, but the, the the spirit of our support for artists, and this applies within all the disciplines that are there, you know, um, is the creation of new work and novel approaches to that work. So it doesn't matter if you're like an emerging artist or a well-established artist, but something that we always charge our panels for these um, deliberations, for these, these particular grants, is think about what this grant, should they receive it, means for the artistic development for the artist at this point in their careers. So in that way, it's less about whether or not you got a lot of credits or you're well-known versus you're just an up and coming artist. And I feel good that we funded the gamut in terms of the variety of work and artists at different points in their careers being successful. And Galen, is that similar for Wave Farm? Yeah, I mean, I as I, pointed out when I was um, sharing the screen, I would really encourage applic potential applicants to look at our past grantees. And I think, I hope you'll find that each year there's a, a pretty uh, diverse group in terms of geography and discipline and where they are in their career, um, you know, but, but you'll definitely get a sense of, of the kinds of projects that um, are received well at panel process. All right, and are all of you open to having people who think they could apply with something, but they're not really sure if in fact this meets the guidelines, even though they read it through? Um, are you open to getting emails about this? Yes. Are, are, are th <laughs> yes. <laughs> read, read the guidelines first, and then you're absolutely welcome to email. Thank you for that, Galen. But yes, um, and you saw my thumbnail on the website and my email and phone number are right there. So no mysteries there. 
we're right. available. And everyone, there's there are webinar past webinars uh, about the application process, so you might want to look at those first before uh, bothering everybody. So, <laughs> but um, thanks. I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat right now. And yes, we are recording this, so we will post it so you can check back and take a look. And um, we'll also put all those links in the dialogue box for the video so that you'll be able to go back and check everyone's websites again. Um, any last words from our panel? Thanks for having us. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Well, thank you all for joining in. Thanks everyone for coming tonight. I hope it was helpful and uh, hope you all be able to get the funding you need for your projects. So. Yes, definitely.